G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. We are here watching the very first ranked game of Season 5 taking place. And boy, oh boy, I'm confident we are going to have a great game today. Sporting in on the north side of the map in the color blue, playing as the Chinese. It is crackety here. <laughs> oh, man, I, I couldn't help myself. I said, you know what? We If, if the devs are just going to allow bugs like this to go live... Uh, I, I'm just going to have some fun with it. So we, we, we've got ourselves, you know, you, you guys want Zoom? We've got Zoom at home. Like, <laughs> welcome to Walmart Zoom, ladies and gentlemen. On the south side of the map, playing in the color teal as the Mongols. We've got Blade 555555555555555. We got him, ladies and gentlemen. He is back. And so is our Zoom. Welcome to a casted game. We're on high view. I'm looking forward to seeing what we are going to be able to witness today because we've got Blade on the Mongols, of course, if you haven't already seen it. The Keshik, the new Keshik is out. And I tell you what, it is an absolute vampire of a unit. This thing life steals. It takes health from its enemy and it gives it to it gives it gives to itself. Now, it's not like your percentage-based lifesteal. If you've played Dota 2, if you've played... Uh, if you played... I don't think League of Legends has lifesteal. Now that I think about it, mainly Dota 2 is, is where lifesteal exists. They've got percentage-based uh, lifesteal based on how much damage you deal. So, like, they have, like, a, I think it's Mask of Madness and Satanic and all those ones do, like, 150% lifesteal, 20% lifesteal, all those sorts of things. Whereas the Keshik does a flat amount. So, it starts off at 3. And that's 3 throughout the entire game until you upgrade it uh, through a unique tech that's available at the stable. Uh, and this tech also has a classic Mongol improved version as well. And that's this one down here, Step Lancer. So, it increases it by 1 health per attack. So, instead of being 3, it goes up to 4. And then with the improved version, it goes from 3 up to 5. Um, so, be on the lookout for that. Now, early on, we do see that it's going to be a classic 2 horsemen opening coming out from Blade. And of course, this is this is a great map for the Mongols. I, I like this map a lot as the Mongols because as a, Mong as a Mongol player, you're going to want to be building outposts throughout the map, whether that's outposts on sacred sites or outposts just to gain line of sight. But on this map in particular, it's extra powerful because if you don't have those outposts up, you're just going to be blind. So I'm liking it already. And Blade going to be moving out with the villager towards that front. And we see the outpost going to be coming down here. It's going to be locking down the gold. But to be honest, there's a gold towards the north with a hunt. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Barbican look to come up in this position. It's going to be tough. It could look, it could potentially be denied as well. I guess that's another thing to note by the horseman. Horseman obviously very potent when it comes to that. But I mean, realistic, uh, actually, you know what? I, I reckon if you try and go for a Barbican up there, you could probably rush it. But it's going to be a whole world of pain. We already see Crackety is going to be going for some age one shenanigans. He hasn't even scouted his enemy. Doesn't even know about... Actually, he may know about the stable. <laughs> but once again, you know, it's one of those classic things where... Oh, geez, wouldn't I love to see his line of sight right now? Like, don't... I'm, I'm, all right, I'm gonna try try and be try and be mature here, Drongo. It's all right, all right. We're only entering into season five. This game breaking bug that we thought would be fixed by the end of the beta is still in the game. But it's all right. We we will get there eventually. Spearman gonna be coming out now, looking to meet the villager. Only the single villager brought for the moment. Spear gonna be able to more than capably deal with this second spearman out, and I think you're just gonna have to back yourself away from the dance floor, sir. This is... You're no longer welcome in these parts. Might get the scout here. You can see he's kind of looking for it. Give me a second here. Yeah, he almost gets the scout. <laughs> We're just going to start using that as my as my unironic zoom from now on. So um, if you got any questions... Uh, oh, oh, take a look at this on the other side of the map. We got our... <laughs> I can't help myself, dude. Oh, gosh. What do we call this video? We got to title it something to do with this. You know, Drongo hacked Age of Empires 4. Like, I... Oh, bless. Big big mistake right there. Hackers taking over Age of Empires 4. Is that, is that what we is that what we talk about? You know, because at the end of the day, I mean, we, we're hacking the game, right? This is a big hack. You know, if if, if someone's playing, <laughs> I'm trying to trying to uh, justify this. You know, um, imagine if you're playing, right, and, and you're trying to micro units, and all of a sudden you're just like. <laughs> It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Anyway, back towards the base of Crackety, though. We'll, we'll, we'll try try our best to forget about that whole Zoom shenanigan and, and just move forward. So Crackety opens with Spears. And I, I love this. I think this is really, really strong because it allows you to put the pressure on the Mongol player. And now all of a sudden, they don't have a response to this. As you can see, Blade has got enough gold to age up. He's going for the Silver Tree, but that's all he's got. And ideally, you'd like to have a couple Vils on gold potentially to, uh, to, to look at getting some traders upon aging up. Now, fortunately, Blade's got a relatively good spawn. He's got the stone close by. He's got, obviously, the wood close by as well. And the pastures will be providing uh, everything that he needs under that town center. But for the moment, 
He loses gold. And I think this is a great move by Crackity because for Blade to respond to this, he's going to need to throw down an archery range. He's going to need to get at least one or two archers out. And then finally, he can look to pressure this. But until that actually happens, he just sits here. He doesn't get to get the gold, doesn't get to trade. And it's a great map to trade on. I mean, we haven't really talked much about trade. Speaking of trade, have a look at this. Nice little trade coming in on the other side. Uh, <laughs> every time I try to zoom, I'm going to unironically do this. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. It, it, for anybody wondering, it, it, it's, it's literally just me pressing a button on the stream deck. I've, I've got like a, a window for Age of Empires 4 and I've just zoomed it into like 7,000%. Probably not that much of a percent, but anyway. So Imperial Academy, going to be coming down for Crackity. Barber can yet to come down, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it is in this position. This is a really good spot. Protects the wood, protects the food, protects the gold. Also, you can kind of protect that little back line there as well. That's a really, really nice spot. And back towards the base, he's actually sieging down the landmark. The silver tree is under pressure here, so he's going to have to pop this bad boy away. So really nice opening coming through from Crackity. And the silver tree is now complete. So you'll see him backing away from that and throws away, throws, uh, throws down, throws away, throws the archery range down immediately. Blade does, uh, which is uh, as to be expected. He'll be looking for double production. But I mean, Kraken, he's done everything that he wants here. Even forcing the archery range in itself is, is a victory. But you can see that j just how much Blade is trying to come out here and get access to this gold. Five villagers all moving out onto this gold. He's not going to allow it though. Crackity isn't. So I'm curious, does Crackity look back home to open into a stable or, or go into a stable after this age up comes through? I wouldn't be surprised if he does just because you know that the archers are going to come. And this is something I love to follow up with, you know, because a lot of people don't expect it, right? Like you open up with the spears in the dark age, people immediately are like, ah, I, I, ne I need to go archers. And then you hit them with, with a, a, a horseman or two. Then you can follow that up with Song Dynasty. Obviously he's already in the Song Dynasty. Uh, but you, you can look to follow that up with the second town center. We can see he's got the wood for it in the bank if he wanted to go for it. So I don't think he will go for it. You can see that he's pulling those fills off now. So we'll be looking for that second TC. So I think he's happy with the damage that he's done here. But one of the risks that he does now have uh, in allowing his enemy to go uncontested archers is that there's the risk that they look to push upon him. Now he's got the Barbican down, but still there can be damage that is done. It depends whether he's going to be able to find it, you know, on the back line here. Maybe an outpost comes up, something like that. So it, it's always something that you have to be aware of. But nice little movement coming out from Crackity. Just keeping it with the standard Chinese play. Barbican comes up. Let's ride on board with him. As he looks to retreat back for the moment. Done a pretty good job of scouting out the map. Still unexplored on this top corner of the map. Let's ride on board with uh, with Blade now. And you can see he's also done the same thing. So nothing up in that, that top corner. But now going to be moving out to the corner of the map. But wants to start with trade immediately. We can see outpost getting thrown down. Now remember, trade is nerfed. Trade is not as strong as it once used to be. And this is a multi, multi-pronged approach here by the devs. So first and foremost, the trade trick no longer works. That's the first thing. For, that for anybody or who doesn't know what the trade trick was or, or doesn't remember it. So basically, that's where you have a market in this corner. And then you have the trading post over here. And then you'd see a whole bunch of markets thrown down right next to the trade post. And the idea was that you would cut your first trip in half, effectively doubling your production in, in, in the first three minutes of that trade route, which was massive because that was the hardest part. Once you, once you got online with your trade, you were fine. But it was about getting online that was the difficult part. Now they've changed it. They've made it so that every single time a trader goes to, to the trading post or returns to its home market, it will be getting gold every single time. And what that means is that if you were to send a trader from here down to this trading post, it's just going to come back at like one gold or zero gold or something like that. So it doesn't really work anymore. But over on the other side of the map, the Keshiks are out already. We can see that they are beginning to make their way onto the field. He's already up to uh, up to three Keshiks at the moment. Now, one of the things to note about the Keshik, as we mentioned before, they do have the option to lifesteal. They heal after every attack. Uh, but one thing to note is they can also heal on sieging, which is really cool when you think about it, right? Like, say as an example, Blade goes for... Uh, here, the mining camp, right? If we look at this mining camp, it's not protected by any of the town centers. So what this means is that Blade can come in here, start hitting this mining camp, and now he's going to heal with his Keshik. So this Keshik's at 145 health. This one's at 101. Now watch what happens when he starts to siege. The health starts to increase. Let me let me give you guys a little bit of a, a, a closer uh, view of that. But you can actually see the the health of of the Keshik is going up. So if you if you're if you're intelligent, if you're a gamer, there's a potential way for you to really make you'll get quite a, a bit of longevity out of your Keshiks. But uh, towards the base of Crackety now, the attack continues to come. Onto this north side, we can see walls have come up and a beautiful little double wall that we've got coming in 
for Crackety. Make sure that, that the back is walled as well as the front. I do like this a lot. He's got these nice walls up. Really well played by Crackety. But remember, these walls can be used to heal up your Kashyx. And that's another thing to note. These Kashyx heal from walls. And you can see that as a result, it's, it's just going to mean you've got a full health Kashyx. So very, very... As long as your micro is good, you can always bring these Kashyx back. And if you know where an enemy wall is or an enemy outpost is, or just something that you can kind of attack into and not have to worry about. When I say outpost, I don't actually mean an outpost. I mean like a position that the enemies put out on the map somewhere that you typically call an outpost that's not physically an outpost, but maybe like a mill or something like that, then uh, you can really look to exploit that. But as we cross the 10 minute threshold, I will make sure that I switch it over to income so you guys can see exactly where these guys are at. Uh, Crackety's starting to pull away on the village account. Obviously, with the two town centers down, he's going to be pumping out villagers nonstop. But on the other side of the map, Blade is going to be looking to keep up with him with that silver tree. Now, keep in mind, the silver tree has also been nerfed. We talked about the fact that trade in general has been nerfed, and it's also nerfed specifically for the Mongols. So the silver tree only produces traders 40% faster now instead of 50% before, and also has a reduced cost of 40% gold instead of the 50% gold, which it was before. So Blade just doing the rounds at the moment. We can see that there's still a, a fair bit of deer back here. Now, another thing to note, Keshik can actually heal off deer. That's true. <laughs> Keshik can, uh, can technically heal from the deer. Uh, if, if they if they kill them. So that's another interesting thing. But Crackety going to be coming out, looking to rewall on this backside. Just keep himself safe. And he's going for that Castle Age. So just doesn't really want to play too much in the Feudal Age. Just keep enough spears that he's okay. Now, fortunately, he is pretty... Well, I was going to say fortunately, but un unfortunately, he's kind of running out of food. Normally, you, you, your sheep should last until about the 10-minute mark. And it seems like it has because he's moved on to berries now. But we do start to see him moving into this right-hand corner. Throws down the village as well, so he's going to be looking to uh, potentially uh, defend against this. But take a look at this. We've got a, a bit of an attack coming through. Spear's going to be coming out onto the front line. Archer's just going to be able to try and tank it up. I, I tried to zoom in once again. You know the rules. If we, if we try and zoom in, we have to do it. Oh, I can't believe I said that rule for myself. Uh, but the Khan gets sniped out. Well played right there by Crackety. Villagers might go down here as well. That's, oh my gosh, that's one villager that manages uh, to, to stay alive. And now Spears on the front line going to be looking to force those Keshiks back, do a decent job. Outpost will go down though. And with that, more Keshiks joining the battle. And Crackety really starting to struggle. This astronomical clock tower at the front of the base is going to be looking to throw down additional military production. We see that he's got the barracks already. We'll probably be moving into the Lancers, I would suspect, uh, after, once the Castle Age comes through. But the New Age has approached us, or, or rather been reached. And Blade is spending a long time in the Feudal Age. And I like this. I support this. I think that the Keshik as a Feudal Age unit is, is almost equivalent to the, the French Knight in my mind. Obviously, they, they are different units. The, the French Knight has a little bit more oomph behind it, but I still think the Keshik serves the exact same role. It can deal effectively with men at arms, and I think you, you'll be able to fight relatively well uh, against the Lancers. You can see Lancers are 24 damage against the Keshik, which is 15. Uh, now that I think about it, maybe it's probably not the best unit when it comes to that kind of thing, because 24 versus 15, after armors, like you, you're talking about, you know, uh, a, a difference of, of maybe 11 damage coming out for these Keshiks, and that's probably going to be, yeah, that's about half the damage of a Lancer. So it's it's a dangerous fight going up against a Lancer like that. And you can see it's really starting to struggle here uh, against that. So maybe I have to take that back. If your enemy does go a Castle Age, maybe you just can't fight. Uh, maybe you just can't uh, play with the Keshiks in, in that way. But you can see Crackety starting to run out of food already in this game. Really struggling. He's got the, the deer up towards that north side, but yet to go into it. And Keshiks making their way through. Villagers jumping inside of the village. And uh, I tell, tell you what, how many times have I asked for a rename for that one? That is a little bit confusing. The villagers in the village. Uh, but uh, fortunately, for the moment, the numbers for Blade is looking pretty solid. He's outnumbering his opponent despite having weaker units. But more and more units continue to trickle in. When it comes to food income, though, take a look at this. He's sitting on 23, and it is starting to dwindle. Te technically, it's about 600, but I can assure you it is not. He's only throwing up the mill behind it. The new Khan has risen, but a lot of villagers went down. Nine villagers, and with that, you can see that the, the lead for Crackety has, has, has definitely shortened. It's, it's not as long as it once used to be. Meanwhile, behind this... We've got danger for Blade, because as, as we mentioned before, the Keshiks do relatively well against the, the Lancers. If, if we were to say, you know, maybe two Keshiks against one Lancer, you're talking about 200 uh, resources on the on one side against 240. So you've got to think from, from that perspective, the, the, the Keshik is obviously, it's probably not worth, you know, two whole Lancers. 
Uh, but it's still a very, very strong unit. And you can see just how well the, the, the Lancers deal with it here. Uh, so he's going to have to fall back. And that also means that he's not going to be able to defend his trade route as easily uh, when he is dealing with, with these raids coming through from the Lancers. So we'll look to get up to the Castaway shortly, I suspect. But look at the numbers here. Uh, we'll probably need to get a couple more pastures out here because starting to struggle with that food. And he's throwing down the pastures. Very well done, my friend. Blade doing a great job. Now, for anybody wondering, uh, these guys do both stream live over on Twitch. So if you're interested in checking them out, I'll leave a link down in the description to where you can watch both of them. They're both streaming live on Twitch, probably right now. So go say good day. And uh, anyway, let's uh, let's get back to the action. As look at the villager migration up here. 41 villagers on food. Crackity is a man who likes venison, it seems. And now back towards the base. Look at all the Kashyx immediately popping out and saying, come on, Blade, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. I, I just tried to zoom then again, but I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. The, the meme. The, I had enough of the meme. I'm sure you guys have as well. So we're just we're just going to leave it. We're just going to leave it. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Kurotai now coming down for Blade in the base on the on the wood line here. And uh, his economy is really starting to kick off. He's only seven villagers behind. Let's take a quick comparison between these two. About 2,000 resources a minute coming through compared to the 1,600 over for Crackity. So Blade actually ahead at the moment on the resource count. So not too bad uh, coming out out from uh, who, someone who's affectionately known as the Blade Meister. Uh, you know, but, you know, while you, you were studying the... The, the way of the world, he was studying the blade. Uh, that's what's important to remember. But up on that north side, we do see outposts beginning to come up for Blade. He was looking to try and establish himself up here. Did go into the arrow slits. Obviously, when you go into the arrow slits, it means no prospect of moving into anything a little bit, any anything heavier. And you can see those arrow slits just such a piddly little attack here compared to that sprinkled. Uh, going to be struggling here, but the, the trader going to look to try and get inside. Not going to be able to find it. Counterattack on the south side as well. And you can see Blade all of a sudden in a little bit of a, a dilly of a pickle. Let's just put it that way. Meanwhile, up towards that north side, we've got ourselves a boar as well as plenty of deer up here. Now, he hasn't brought a whole bunch of villagers out here and he is outnumbered uh, with regard to the spears, but does finally lose that knight down on that south side. You can see the knight starting to, starting to struggle here as it does eventually go the way of the dodo. And interestingly... We, we see him fall back away from the uh, from the spears, despite there only being such a short, a small amount of them. But uh, let's, ha let's have a look on board with Crackity and see how he's doing. We'll, we'll ride on his perspective. Second outpost coming down up in the north here. Still plenty of villagers, but I think that as long as you've got that space, you'll be okay. Does he have the option for a village up here? He does have the option for a village up here as well. So I'd be looking to try and get a village down here as well. Always great use. And look at this. Just th those, those lancers coming through. The consequence of not being able to wall is it makes it very difficult to defend your trade line. Fortunately, he's got Yam Network. As long as he's got the Keshiks, he'll be okay. We now start to see the Keshiks beginning to build up Sacred Site. As you guys can see, it's still quite clearly displayed in caster mode. It, uh, it, it got taken out of every other mode. In fact, if we switched it over to the, uh, to the other, other uh, casting mode, uh, we wouldn't see it there. But for some reason, the devs forgot about caster mode. Um, which, you know, probably isn't the first time I've said that this week. Nice little raid, though, up towards that north side. Blade really looking to put on the pressure. Doing a decent job of forcing back those villagers. Going to be causing quite a bit of chaos in the base of, of uh, Crackity. I would suspect he's going to be looking for a transition of farms very, very soon if he isn't already. There we go. So the farm transition now coming down. Big timing on this as well. Beautiful amount of farms. He's 22 farms, so he was stacking up the wood, that is for sure. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, I mean, Crackity's managed to even it up pretty well. And you can see the Lancers, just how much trouble they're causing Blade. So it really makes me think, you know, is, is it just a consequence of maybe... Uh, uh, how good are the Keshiks? I mean, the Keshiks seem pretty good, right? 19 damage. I think it's imperative that you look to get your upgrades with them, though. And now going to be moving into Crossbows as well. So Crossbow Keshik, going to be the way of the day. Let's see exactly how this stacks up against the Chinese here. It's been a solid game so far from our Chinese player in the north. And now Relic's going to be looking to get picked up here. Interestingly, we haven't seen Blade go for them, but I guess with with trade as a, as a threat, gold isn't really much of a priority for him. He, he's had the option to, to go for a little bit earlier of, of a heavy gold income here. So but where are the Keshiks, though? It says he's got 12 Keshiks out on the map. I just don't see them. Is he is he counterattacking? There's, there's six Keshiks here. Where are the Keshiks? There they are. They're down on the south side. Maybe, is, is it lying to me? It says 11 Keshiks. Oh, there they come now, coming up the rear. In the rear with the gear. I think that's a StarCraft 2 quote. I'm pretty sure. It's a voice line from StarCraft 2. I think it's the, the Marine. Not 100% sure, though. 
Anyway, nice little drop-offs coming through. I'm curious how much he's getting. I, I, I just saw a five there, but let's have a look and see. 50, only 59 gold? Surely it's more than that. I guess it's that far. It's that close in. Jeez. 59 gold doesn't feel that good for coming that far, but I guess, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? New Khan rises. And Blade looks to rise with it. Keshik numbers are beginning to really go up here. And we can see Crackety moving into Spears. So I kind of like this play, right? Like, he, he's gone pretty heavy on the Lancers upon opening up into the Castle Age. Mongols has definitely had trouble dealing with that. So I think that's something that we can learn. If you're playing up against a lot of Mongols on the ladder, look to try and get that early castle. Look to try and get into Lancers as quickly as you can. And just put on the pressure out on the map. Because trade is obviously still a really big part of the Mongols' identity. A big part of the Mongols' play style. So they'll be looking and looking to trade. But I guess that's also exclusive to specific maps, right? And specific spawns. So Dry Arabia, if you try and trade on Dry Arabia, you're, just, you're not going to have a fun time. And interestingly, just puts the one Keshik... Actually, now that I think about it, how does the Keshik do? Because it's also got the lifesteal. So technically... And the lifesteal is raw damage or raw life that you got to remember, right? So it, when, we, when we look here, it, it's like 24 damage versus the 19. But is that really 19 damage? Because you, you could probably call that instead of 19 damage. You could effectively call that, say, 22 damage. Because it's, it's getting that plus three uh, from the heal. But I guess that's in a, in a one versus one uh, position. You know, if, if your enemy's just attacking your traders, then it's not going to be the case. It is, uh, it's, it's definitely not going to be, uh, not going to be of assistance to you. But Blade now down 20, 27 villages, which is a pretty significant amount at this point. Normally you would expect to see China have a very strong boom. And that's exactly what they've done here. You want to try and keep them down as much as possible, which Blade has done. But the, I think the response from Kragney has been really strong. And I think in this matchup, it's going to be a necessity that you look to put on aggression like that. I think the, the, the best way that you could probably play this as the Mongols is by having two defensive groups of Kashyyyk. So maybe, you know, three to four Kashyyyks on either side, just looking to constantly pick up raids, pick up pick up these attacks. And then at the same time, if we take a look at the line of sight for Blade, I feel like he's really missing a lot of intel from these these flanks on the map. So maybe some outposts on these these flanks would definitely help him uh, with forecasting where those raids are. So in, in this example, you know, you might might begin to move your Kashyyyks forward and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, I've, I've got to bring them back because I spot a raid coming in rather than just going, ah, oh, I've got a raid. So you can see right now, like he's got the, the Kashyyyks down here on the flank, another one up here on the top side. You could potentially avoid that if, if you just throw up those uh, those outposts uh, lying in wait. But we can see right now those Keshiks are going to be moving out. Khan not, not going to be showing himself at all. Crossbow's continuing to move up. And now you've got to defend the back line, but also at the same time defend your front. And this is where it gets a little bit difficult because the, the Keshiks have got to go follow the, the Mongol or the, the Lancers on the other side. Nice little job right here. Springled actually getting some decent shots off. Kurotai under pressure here. Springled might actually go down. He's not even going to be able to get the uh, the, the clock tower nest of bees. It manages to survive with 10 health. Crossbow is now going to be turning around and dealing with these spears in the face. A little bit more difficult to do. And now you can see the real struggle that's coming in for Blade. Perfect timing from Crackety. He manages to spot out one of them. They're going to turn around. Manage to take him out and begin to move down towards his south side. There are a couple of Keshiks still here. But on that front, it looks like Blade's managed to hold on. And the numbers starting to improve for Blade. Sitting up at 48 military population at the moment. And now those Lancers are going to be able to find success down here. Looking to clean up more and more traders. It's at this point where I'm really starting to think maybe you should look at adding in additional markets. Because one of the big things is, you know, after a trader makes one or two trades, it's going to pay itself off. So as long as you've got a lot of traders, the likelihood that they make a successful trade is going to go up. Because you can only kill so many traders here on the back line. And now the Kashyyyks going to be looking to chase away these Lancers. Beautiful micro coming in. He manages to pick off more and more traders. I'm curious if he just comes in, taps one of them, taps two of them, and just keeps moving on. You can see he's really struggling here now. More Lancers on that south side. Walls continuing to come up as the Trebs beating down the front of the base of Crankety. But Crankety sitting at 195 population. We'll be looking for an Imperial Age shortly. And once he goes Imperial, he's going to be looking for Roller Shutter Triggers as an option. Could also be looking just for Elite Spears. Elite Spears, obviously, an incredibly strong upgrade. I, Elite Spears is probably my favorite upgrade in the game. It, it, it's just such a strong upgrade because the Spearman is a great unit against everything, but not particularly good against... Like, I, I don't know if I'm getting my point across, but you can just spam Spearman and you can be happy. So Elite Spears just go really well together with that. But Spearman numbers really beginning to build here. Keshik's going to have some trouble as they begin to run in, but hold, hold your horses, ladies and gentlemen, as the Keshik's are now coming through. I tried to zoom in once again, but I'm not going to do it. 
Meanwhile, on the back line, the Keshik's just wreaking havoc back here. Crossbow is doing a huge job. The, the Kurotai managing to heal up everything. At the same time, look at the spears just overwhelming the front. A, a lack of archers here. Almost coming into play for Blade. It definitely feels like having some archers would have would have gone a long way here, but now really starting to struggle. Big attack from that back line. Where are the Springles? Springles need to make sure that they focus down that nest of beasts. They are indeed looking to, to try and hit it. He's only got the two, though. And now the, those crossbow masses still holding on. The Kurotai doing a great job of just healing it all up. And behind this, Crackety didn't actually go Imperial. He recognized that there was going to be a fight, so he saved all of those resources and said, we're, we're just going to keep them for a little bit longer. Still that spear spam is coming, but he's beginning to switch into Palace Guards. Perhaps this is where, this is the point where maybe Blade looks to add in those archers. So the Palace Guards could definitely take you by surprise, take you, catch you off guard potentially. And now that push going to continue happening. This is where, uh, at this point, one of the things that Blade is missing out is the trench. This is where you need to bring four to five villagers forward and you need to start throwing down outposts because have a look how long that fight was. There was no real threat to any kind of outpost. If, if there had been five outposts here, all with, with sprinkled emplacements, that would have been a completely different fight. Don't get me wrong, it went well for Blade, but that, that could have been a game ender right there. And now Crackety in a really difficult position. Blade's done a great job in defending throughout this game. Trade back on the other side of the map. He's got 18 traders in total. And now continuing to push forward. Crossbows having a little bit of trouble here against the spears. You can see that they've, they've got difficulty up against them, but the Khan goes down. And the crossbows just focusing a lot of these units rather rather than managing to, to take them all out quickly. It's a little bit of a, a, a slow grind down. But the numbers here are pretty solid for him still. The cash is going to be coming through. The economy for Blade behind this is still very solid. We can see he's sitting at about 3k resources. Compared to Crackety though, Crackety's at about 5.2k. That's a huge difference between these two. Crackety with a massive economic advantage up 42 villages. And as you would expect with a lead like that, and we've trade nerfed so much, it's only a matter of time until Crackety manages to, uh, to overwhelm uh, Blade at this point. So the numbers... Definitely something that we've got to be paying attention to. Upgrade's going to come in finally for Crackety. He, we haven't seen upgrades from him all game. So he's been losing a lot of effectiveness on the unit. And good game gets called. Blade realizes he can't push. He realizes that's it. The, the economy is way too strong behind this. I can't do anything against it. And good game gets called. Fellas, if you've enjoyed this game, make sure you leave a like. I don't think I've ever asked for that on this channel. Uh, and uh, make sure you go check out these two players. I'm going to leave links in the description of where you can watch them live. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.